All right, well, next up in our tutorial series, uh, it's not much of a brick breaker game if you don't have bricks. So I'm going to do a quick little search and see if I can find an image that I can use for my bricks. Now, I, I can do this pretty easily, and I can actually use the trick I used for the paddle. I can just kind of take a screenshot of a solid color, um, but if I want to, I can see if maybe I can find something else. So. When you do a search on Google Images, over here there's so tools, and if I go to tools, I can choose transparent, and that only gets me bricks with transparent backgrounds. And so I can look through here and see if there's anything I like. Um, for example, I kind of like those bricks there. They're a little bit shiny. They have some kind of texture to them. So if I click there, um, I can zoom in a little bit and then maybe I can just take a screenshot of one of those bricks. So I'll try to take a screenshot of this top brick here without getting any background in there. So let's see. Okay, so I got a screenshot of a brick and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I did before when I made the paddle. I'm gonna right click on actor. I'm going to make a brick class and I'm going to go get that image by importing from library of the brick. And now you can see here that I have a brick class. And you can see my bricks are pretty large and you know there's I don't like that little thing in the corner. I may have to go and do some photo editing or maybe later I decide this isn't the brick I want after all. But for now, it's good enough. I've got a brick on the screen and that's really all I really want here. So let's go to my world and you can see here I have a part of the code where it puts objects in the world and I'm going to put a brick on the world by copying that line, paste, and instead of putting a new ball I'm going to put a new brick. But in this case I'd like it to be higher so I'm going to put it up high by only going down about 50 pixels. So there you go, you can see now I have a brick on the screen and eventually Yep, it's going to hit it. So we have a brick on the screen and what we want to do is we want to make the brick go away when the ball hits that brick. So I'm going to go into the ball class and in here I already have some code that checks to see if the ball hits the paddle. So I can actually use this and do something very similar. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste right here. But instead of checking to see if the ball hits the paddle, I'm going to check to see if the ball hits the brick. So wherever I see paddle, I'm going to change the word to brick because now I'm not looking to see if the ball hits the paddle. I want to see if the ball hits the brick and I'm going to change this to B for brick. So very similar to what we did with the paddle, we're going to say, okay, if the ball hits a brick, if B, so this whole thing is basically saying, if the ball hits a brick, this is the test that says, did a ball or did the brick hit a ball? And if it did, then we are going to say, well, B is not nothing, which means we must have hit something. But now here, instead of changing the direction of the ball, all we want to do is remove the brick from the screen. And the way I do that is with a get world, which gets me the current world that I'm in. And when we get to multi-level games, that will be important. And then a dot. And then I hit control space. And here are all the options that I can do, all of my methods when I have a get world. So these are all the things I can do with a world. One of the things I can do with a world is remove a certain actor. And the actor I want to remove is not the ball in this case, it's the brick, which I called B. So I put a B right there. I always end the line with a semicolon. And just like that, I did it. It removes from the screen. So now I've got a, I've got a ball that will remove from the screen when it falls through the bottom and I've got a brick that will be removed from the screen when it gets hit by the ball. Perfect. Okay. So we're getting somewhere here. Now the question is, how can we make more of these bricks appear on the screen? And if you're thinking, well, you could go in here and you could put a whole bunch of these on the screen 
and just copy paste and then maybe change the coordinates a little bit you know do something like this that will work you're not wrong and if I play a little bit you can see there I made one go away I made another go away oh look at that made them all go away so I mean that might be a problem in itself for later we might want the brick to or the uh, the ball to hit just one and then bounce back down but for now we want to consider how can we get more bricks appearing on the screen and the answer is this is not a super efficient way to do it because eventually you know when I take a look at the pictures I saw that's a lot of bricks to make appear on the screen I don't really want to have to copy and paste my code that many times and that's where we run into something called a loop and so I'm gonna just put one instance of add a brick to the screen and that will add just one brick however a loop is something that will run code over and over and over again so I want to I want to run this line of code over and over and over again so let's try putting eight bricks on the screen so I'm gonna write a for loop and I'm gonna write it and then we'll talk about it okay so this is what we call a for loop in Java and what it is is it is a structure that will start at zero and increase by one each time it goes through the loop until it gets to eight so this loop is saying let's make an integer variable called x x is going to start at zero and every time we add an object we're going to increase x by one and we're not going to stop adding objects until x gets to eight so as long as x is less than eight we're going to keep doing this over and over and over again. Now, when I run it, you'll see here it looks like there's just one brick on the screen. But actually, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are actually eight bricks on the screen. The only thing is, when I put that code in, I told every brick to go to 250. So all of the bricks are going to those coordinates, and I forgot to space them out. So now what I need to do is figure out, well, how can I make the eight bricks appear on the screen, but I want to space them out? And the answer is, I can use this x variable. Remember, x is going to start at zero. The next time through the loop, it's going to be one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six, and then seven. So x is continually going up. So if you're thinking, well, I could just put X right there, you're not that far off. But what you get in that case is the bricks are going to, the first brick will appear at zero in the X direction. The next one appears at one and the next one at two and so on. So they're actually, it's, it's kind of working, but they're not spaced out enough. So I need to space them out more. So you could say to yourself, well, what if I wanted them to go up instead of going you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, what if I wanted them to go 0, 50, 100, 150, what if I wanted them to space out by 50? And you can do that by multiplying x by 50. And now watch what's going to happen. Now they're starting to space out more. That's great. And you look at that and go, okay, that's not quite enough. I need to space it out a little bit more. So maybe I can try 75, and you can see they're spacing out more. Now, what we're realizing is that we're going to have to learn how to change the size of our bricks. And so to do something like that, notice in the brick there's an act method, right? An act method is something that will happen over and over and over again. So we wouldn't want to resize the bricks in here. We don't want to have the bricks resizing themselves throughout the whole game. We just want the bricks to resize themselves one time and one time only. So I'm going to take out this comment and I'm going to add a new method, a special method that is actually called brick like this. And this you have actually seen before in my world. My world does not have an act method, it has a constructor. 
So notice here is the class declaration of my world. In other words, this is where the code for the whole my world is. And it says public my world. This is a constructor that will happen once and once only when the world is created. So what I've just done here in the brick is I've made a constructor for the brick. This will happen once and one time only when the brick is created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, for every brick that is created, I want to get the image and I want to scale it to be, I don't know, let's try 70 pixels wide by 20 pixels high. So this should make these bricks a different size. And you can see here now it's kind of working. It's, it's starting to look actually quite a bit better. The only issue is I have bricks that are falling off the edge of the screen. So the last thing I want to do is move all of these bricks over a little bit. And the way I can do that is to go back into my world. And right here, this is defining the X position of each brick. So if I take 0 and multiply it by 75, it's going to be 0. So I want to add a little bit to this number. If I want the first brick to start at, let's say, 30, I'm going to put 30 plus x times 75. And let's see what happens when I do that. You can see they shifted over. Not quite enough. So let's go back. Let's try 35. Not quite enough. Let's go back. And we can just adjust that until we get it exactly where we want it. And that's looking pretty good. So now I've got a row of bricks up in the sky that looks exactly like what I want. Let's see how the game plays. Now I still have to make them bounce, but you can see that all the bricks are going away the way I thought, and the ball is going to fall through. So we are well on our way to making a very good brick breaker game here. Now what I can do is I can add different kinds of bricks, put them up in the sky as well, and we'll have to make that ball bounce off each brick. There you go. That's how you get your bricks up in the sky.